Hey, what is up? Uh, driving into Algodones. I am just outside of Yuma, Arizona. And the question is, is why am I doing this? And the answer is simple. If you know me, you know that maybe kind of I think outside the box sometimes. Well, I'm thinking outside the box right now. I am on my way to the dentist in Mexico. And so just wanted to share this journey with you. Just kind of go, hey, this is what's happening. This is what I'm doing. So I had a, uh, I had a, got in a fight, if you can call it that, in high school. Not really a fight. He hit me. I hit the ground. So anyway, lost a tooth. And for the last 10 years, I've had kind of, I don't even know what you'd call it, uh, a bridge or something like that, a fake tooth that a good friend of mine uh, put in for me and hooked me up. However, it kept falling out and I was losing some bone. And so I needed to get an implant put in. And so I had an implant put in by uh, Josh, Josh Hethcox um, there in Knoxville, Tennessee, an amazing periodontist. Um, however, when it came time to get the crown put on, um, I'm gonna have to get a crown uh, on that tooth where the implant is, but then also crown next to it where they drilled uh, the bridge or whatever onto it, as well as a filling on the other side. So went to the dentist to get an estimate on what that would cost. And the estimate came to $3,200. Whew. So I started thinking outside the box and I decided to go on a little medical vacation. And so I called up my parents. Actually, I started out by looking around and going, you know, where can I go? And I looked up some medical places in Cancun and some things like that. And, uh, you know, what, what can I do along those lines? Um, and, uh, you know, just started asking the question, you know, can I go to Cancun? Can I go to another place? What are flights like? And found some places. Um, however, you know, it was a big risk. And then I remembered my parents live in Arizona, right by the border with Mexico. So I called up my dad and I said, hey dad, I said, do you know of anybody who's ever had any medical dental work done in, in Mexico? He said, yeah. He said, uh, let me find out some great places for you. So he talked to his neighbor, his neighbor in particular, you know, said, hey, I've been there and I know a bunch of people have been to so this great place. So I called him up and I got an estimate and said, how much is it going to cost? And the high end of the estimate was $1,500. Fifteen hundred dollars uh, to have the tooth done uh, just across the border uh, into Mexico. Um, I'm actually going to walk across, um, and it's two blocks into Mexico. I'm going to walk across the border. Now, this is all new. I'm not saying it's going to go great, and that's part of the reason that I'm documenting this to find out, you know, what is the reality for this. Because some of you might go, "Huh? All right, vacation in uh, vacation to Mexico, get my tooth done. Maybe that's something that I want to do." So, I'm going to kind of document a little bit. About what the experience is like um, and so that you can kind of make your own decision as worth as to whether or not it's worth it um, like I said cost for the tooth the teeth replacement is about fifteen hundred dollars um, and the estimated cost for my trip is going to be five hundred dollars now I am saving money uh, my flights about two hundred dollars I am saving money by staying with my parents for the week um, however, for the night, because it's about three hours, three and a half hours from my parents to get to the, to the border, I'm actually um, going to have to stay in a hotel for the night. So that's about another hundred bucks. And then I also added in probably the cost of going to a spring training baseball game or two. But anyway, so that's just kind of the plan. That's what's happening. Just wanted to fill you in. Say, hey, going down to, going down to Mexicali, all right, going down to Baja, California. Um, heading into Mexico, getting the tooth done, um, and gonna kind of document it and say, hopefully save a thousand bucks. Hopefully get a vacation out of it, and uh, let you join on the ride. There you go. God bless. All right, standing outside the U.S. border, just parked the car, and uh, here we go. Walking towards the, uh, walking towards it. It's like uh, getting in. It's sort of like. Uh, uh, anytime like you go to Dollywood or something like that Cedar Point whatever the case may be you know it's a giant parking lot people are kind of shuffling in there's kind of the flow of traffic that just happens and uh, yeah so here we go let's see if I can cross the border got all my stuff with me I think um, fingers crossed all right, made it across the border, walked right across, didn't even talk to anybody, walked straight into Mexico, no problem. I'm assuming getting into the US will be a little bit more difficult. But man, it is nothing but optical places, nothing but dental places, tons and tons of dental places. Little markets on the way in, all that kind of stuff. So, um, 
this is definitely, if you need dental work, definitely a lot of options here. I'm about to head into amazing dental care. I'm a little bit early for the appointment. Let's see how it goes. All right, so just finished up with my first dental treatment of two. And uh, so my total bill is actually gonna be a little bit more than I had expected. Um, but that's my fault because I didn't read the, I didn't read exactly what it said. So it's gonna be 1665. Um, I paid a portion of it up front, 50%. In fact, actually I didn't even put down 50%. They let me slide on that, I guess. As long as I gave them X amount of cash, it was all good. Um, so I got a little bit of cash, gonna explore uh, a little bit of Mexico, then head back across the border. Um, and uh, overall, uh, pain-free, you know, the exact same pain that I would feel if I'd gone to an American dentist. Um, you know, you feel that sharp kind of stinging pain, as it were, you know, when they give you the, um, when they give you the um, shot to, to numb you. Um, and, uh, but, you know, overall, good experience. My guy spoke uh, good, good enough English. I mean, it wasn't choppy. He, you know, there was at times when he searched for some, you know, some of the bigger words. Um, but uh, overall, a positive experience. Um, the place was super clean. Um, I, every tool that he took out, he ended up taking out, um, you know, out of a package. Uh, so that, that made me feel good. That was great. Um, so overall, positive experience. If there's anything else I could think of, I will definitely come back and, and, and mention it. So let's go explore Mexico a little bit. Okay, so I just walked the street. So tons of opportunities in terms of dental stuff, in terms of uh, dental stuff, optical stuff. I mean, every shop, every store in the world. Um, then you've got all these uh, vendors approaching you, talking to you as you're walking down the street. Be prepared to say no thank you. And the cool part is they don't hassle you. Just say no thank you, be polite and move on. Um, now the other kicker is, is I would love to stick around, have a few beers and experience some really good Mexican food, but the problem is I'm not allowed to eat anything for two hours. So working through that, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do, how to spend some time. I might get a haircut actually while I'm here. I don't know, we'll see. So decided to get a haircut here at Gutierrez number one barbershop. Total cost, $8. Of course I tipped nicely because well, you can't get a good haircut in Knoxville for less than 25, 30 bucks. So anyway, and that doesn't even include the tip. So I liked it. I thought he did a really good job, took his time, did well. I've had worse haircuts, that's for sure. So yeah, enjoying Mexico so far. I think I'm just gonna head back across the border because quite frankly, I just don't feel like wasting a whole bunch of time here, especially if I can't eat or drink. If I could eat or drink, it'd be a different story. So uh, coming back tomorrow, all right. All right, so I just cleared the border. It took me 28 minutes and 28 seconds from the time I got in line to cross the border into the United States. Now, um, the dentist recommended that I could stay at a couple of different places. Um, I called around. None of them had um, none of them had a pool and a hot tub that was working. And I also thought, you know what, I might do a casino. So, um, you know, get a buffet, play a little card games, play a little slots. Um, so, what I ended up doing is I'm actually traveling about 20 minutes to a place called Coco Pa, and I probably said that wrong, but that's where I'm traveling, um, and I'm gonna spend the night there. They got a pool, they got a hot tub, and um, you know the room looks nice. Doesn't look like they got necessarily a ton in the way of the casino, but that's okay. I'm not really a player, and I don't really have that much. I have X amount of dollars that I'm gonna spend. So anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Probably just gonna get a lot of rest more than anything else. Um, so there you go. That's uh, that's all I could think of in terms of uh, other kind of notes regarding uh, the process. Um, as while I was standing in line, I had a ton of you know buskers and a ton of people, um, you know, offering goods. All you gotta do, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. The line kept moving. It was just a really really long line, um, so that was good. Appointments for tomorrow, so one day turnaround. I'm um, excited about that. I'm probably gonna also check out some optical options. Turns out I need some glasses. I'm an old man at this point. The doctor's telling me I need to get some bifocals. Um, so you can get them there, um, order them, purchase them, and they mail them to you. Um, I don't know if I'll do that. We'll see, we'll see how it plays out. So there you go, that's my update. Okay, 
so here's where we stand. I uh, came back to Amazing Dental, gonna have day two of my dental work done. And it turns out that right next door is Soul Dental and Optical. And I thought, you know what? I arrived a little bit early. Gonna do some, uh, gonna do some uh, research into how much it would be for optical. No, thank you. Um, and yeah, so went in and said, hey, I've just been, uh, you know, here's my prescription. Uh, just been diagnosed as needing progressive lenses. And so uh, I said, you know, how much would it cost and how long would it take and all that kind of stuff. So here's the deal progressive lenses with transition uh, I tried on some frames found some ones I like and they're gonna be ready in an hour and a half so I'm gonna head back into the dental place have my dental work done by the time I come out my glasses should be ready total cost two hundred dollars um, now I priced it out uh, back where we live in Knoxville Tennessee and it was four hundred and eighty five dollars so you know what? I'm I I may end up losing two hundred dollars on this, but again, I'm doing it for you people, man. I'm just you know, is this worth it? You know what a what a wild experiment. Um, so, anyway, uh, and then you know if it if it works out, then there's going to be some uh, you know some savings in the big long run um, to make this trip even more worthwhile. So there you go. That's where I'm at today here in Algodones, Mexico, Mexico. Sorry. All right. God bless. Okay, so here's how this has worked out so far. Um, the glasses, um, and they said it would take an hour and a half to get them progressive uh, transition lenses. And then I went into the dentist, and when I went into the dentist, uh, they put the teeth that they had had made on, um, but the color was just wrong. Um, and so they said, hey, we're gonna send it off to the lab, it'll be an hour, and so, uh, I sat there for an hour in the chair, just kind of reading and all that kind of stuff, just kind of chilling. And then I went in and I checked on my glasses. Guess what? My glasses are on. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give these a go here. Uh, uh. All right. So look at this transition like this. All right. And so here are my first pair of readers that came in in an hour and a half. Um, and as you can see, they are transition lenses. Um, so then I went back into the dentist. And when I went into the dentist this time, he said, uh, we put the teeth in. The color was a match, but we had to do a little bit of shaping and grinding. Um, and then they said, okay, well, now that we've got it shaped and ground, uh, we're gonna send it back to lab. Again, just kind of fix it up just a little bit. So that's pretty awesome, right? It's not like they're trying to, uh, it's not like they're trying to just shove something in my head and just go, okay, you know, uh, you move on, you know? Um, they're actually, you know, making sure that it looks good, feels good, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, I'm checking out my uh, progressive lenses for the first time ever. Um, now, that's the other part, so. Okay, so I am back across the border. I did a video when I crossed the border, but the wind was absolutely whipping around, making it virtually impossible to be heard. So figured uh, now that I'm back across the border, I'm in the car, I'm driving down I-8, heading, uh, heading back towards Phoenix, I figured I would do a quick video. Um, so this is my new smile. Um, you know, and uh, so really quickly, let me describe the wind here, you know, totally different than what we would ever experience in, um, in Knoxville. Um, you know the wind is literally just whipping across it looks like a dust storm the place is just covered with dust um, as the wind is whipping across the desert um, and it, it's definitely 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 dusty and it made it impossible so that you couldn't even hear me as I was as I was talking in the last video so my teeth let's talk about my teeth first teeth feel weird um, but it's always gonna feel weird anytime that you have I get I think a new procedure or teeth done it's gonna feel a little weird um, you know I just went to my periodontist uh, before I left and he put it he my thing had come out and he put it back in it felt really tight it took a day or two to adjust to how that felt it feels you know it doesn't even feel that tight um, and I think they did a pretty good job of matching up the teeth um, in terms of, of, of the brightness um, overall I'm pleased um, yeah, it's just going to take some getting used to and that's part of this process that's part of i think what makes this process so we'll use the word dangerous um is that i don't have somebody i can immediately go back to um in this process i'm going to probably save close to a thousand dollars save but who knows i might have to fly back at some point 
drive four hours, you know, and and go to uh, to an, another dentist or go back and have them adjust something, or maybe I can have it done there in Knoxville. I don't know, but that's part of the danger, right? You're going. It's not like it's not like I live here in Phoenix and okay, hey, I can just go. So that's part of the danger when it comes to having this dental procedure done is what if it's not perfect? And that's another reason too that I've actually, um, you know, made sure that I've got time to go back over the next, uh, over the next little bit. I've got time to, uh, you know, go back and, uh, and have, it, have it looked at or have them redo it if I need it to be redone. So overall, happy with the teeth. Um, you know, I'm not sure that anybody could have could have done any better, to be honest with you. And, and again, time will tell how well they stay in, um, how good they feel and their use. You know, this isn't like, you know, I always get a kick when you read those Amazon orders and people say stuff like, um, hey, I'm going to give this uh, pair of underwear that I just bought, I'm going to give it five stars because it arrived on time. Don't care if it arrived on time. That's not how you judge underwear, right? You got to wear it for a while. You got to, you know, got to make, make sure it's not bunching up. Got to make sure it lasts. Don't give it a five-star review on day one. You can't give it a five-star review. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. You know, got to just kind of wait and see over time how this plays out. So there's that. Now, really quick, let's also talk about the glasses. Whew, this is a really, really tough one to judge. So I got these glasses. They were $200. They're progressive lenses based on my prescription. And the problem is, is I've never had progressive lenses before. And everybody says it takes a while to get used to them. And so I, you know, I was walking around town, trying them out, they're transition lenses. They were gonna cost me $485 if I got them at home, $200 there. And I'm still getting used to them. I mean, it was it was wild. It, it was it was weird. But again, everybody says that that's the way it's going to be with the progressive lenses. So I'm, I have nothing to compare it to. So I don't know. Also, again, if that's a good deal or not. Uh, I'm you know it may be it may be that I just you know take some time getting used to them over the next week or two. Um, you know, wear them for an hour, wear them for two hours at a time, and really just kind of get used to them. And if they don't work out, it was a $200 gamble. Um, overall, it still makes the trip worthwhile. I'll still come out ahead on the trip. Um, if they work, great. Then I got a place where I can get glasses on the cheap in the future if I'm in the area of, you know, of Mexico. Um, and if they don't work, then you know what? I just pay out the $580, $485 that I would have paid otherwise um, there in the U.S. Oh, and, that, and I'd be taxed on it in the U.S. as well. So anyway, so those are just a few things about my experience. The wind is blowing really, really hard. The road is, is I mean, it looks like a haze and a fog, all the dust that's over here on the road. And, uh, and there you go. Uh, I'll, I'll fill you in on some more stuff as we go along. Um, and as I continue to have this experience, um, share some of the things that are going on. Um, I'll share some stuff about the uh, hotel that I stayed at last night, some of the things that I learned and didn't learn along those regards. Um, oh. One last thing, the border crossing. So the border turns out closes at 2 p.m. California time, which is actually the local time there. It's 2 p.m. And uh, man, I was in line at, uh, at 1 p.m. And the crazy part is, is yesterday it took me 30 minutes to get across. The line was double as long. And today it took me uh, a solid hour and 11 minutes. Now, luckily they didn't do a hard shut on the border because I would have been a few minutes out. But again, um, you know, luckily I was in line. I was ready to go. I was at least close. So they at least left it open. So there you go. That was a scary moment, but I survived. And I would have survived if I got stuck in Mexico too. I'm sorry, Mexico. All right. There you go. God bless. Okay, so a couple of things. Taking in a spring training ball game here in the beautiful state of Arizona. Ironically enough, I've got, uh, ironically enough, it's colder here than it is in Knoxville. <laughs> and my seats are in the shade, which is a royal pain in the ass. But anyway, because um, it's cold, and I got my hoodie on. I look like a thug standing out here. But a um, couple things. So spring training, obviously the stands are not anywhere near as full as they used to be. So there's that. And then in addition to that, you've got, um, you had to buy two tickets at the same time. I went up to the window and I was looking at tickets online and all that kind of stuff. So I'm drinking, uh, I'm drinking this beer because I got a, a mask Nazi here behind me. She's about to ask me probably to put a mask on. But anyway, 
So, uh, so I'm, I'm sitting here and I uh, walked up to the window and I said, hey, um, what are you, um, what do you have in the way of tickets? They said, well, I've got these tickets. And they said, uh, it's $40 each. I said, well, I want one. They said, we can't do one. I'm like, you can't do one. They're like, nope, we got to sell in pods. So I had to get two tickets. <laughs> now I ended up paying 80 bucks for the two tickets, which is cool because as it turns out, my dad's gonna come and he's gonna join me for the game. And uh, nor other tickets online and stuff would have been about at least starting at $100 just for one ticket. So definitely a deal there. So happy about that. And uh, and yeah, so taking in a, a spring a spring training game, Padres and Rockies. Don't even care who's playing. I'm outside. There's sunshine. There's baseball. I'm not sitting in the sun. Um, now here's one more question for you. In the national anthem, if I'm wearing a mask, do I have to finish it off by saying "Living in the land of the free, a home of the free and the brave"? A land of the free, home of the brave. Do I need to do that? I don't think so. I don't know. Something to consider. All right. So there you go. A little update on the on the vacation here in Arizona. God bless. So this is the size of my mom's fanny pack. I'm going to see a baseball game with her, and as it turns out, this. It's too big of a thing to bring into a baseball game these days. Absolute insanity. Then there was a guy walking in. He was wearing a gator, and they turned him away. Said, you can't come in with a gator. You need a, a regular mask. So um, learning all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, it reminds me, when I was in high school, we had uh, we had hats. Kids could wear hats to high school, and, uh, and that was the case up until my junior year. And then in my junior year of high school, they came along, and they said, you can't wear hats anymore. And you just had to go, what is this insanity? You know what I mean? It was like, we all bristled. Now, if you went into the classroom today, those kids, they'd be like, hats, what? No, who cares? I don't, I don't need to wear a hat. But for those of us who had experienced that freedom and the joy of waking up in the morning and throwing a hat on and then running to school, losing a hat was a big, big deal. Losing that freedom was, man, huge. And man, that's just what it's like today, right? Walking into a ball game, can't even wear a fanny pack that's bigger, just barely bigger than the size of my hand. So anyway, so another thing we learned about uh, baseball games is depending upon who they're playing, the price has changed. Now, of course, I guess we always knew this, but even the ticket face value of the ticket price has changed, right? So yesterday they were playing the Padres, the Colorado Rockies were, and the ticket price, the face value, the face value of the ticket price was $40. They're playing the Cubs, and the face value is eighty dollars. I'm not even talking about third-party sites like Ticketmaster. I'm sorry, Ticketmaster is the source, but you know vendors like StubHub and SeatGeek. We're not even talking about that stuff. We're just talking about straight up the face value. So, feeling the crunch on that today. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, took a look at going to a different stadium and stuff. But at the end of the day, just made sense to go here again, check out the Cubs and the Rockies playing each other. Um, and again, welcome to the insanity that is. Modern society, fanny pack is too big, and a ticket is twice as much when they play the Cubs. So, welcome to America, people. All right, so people have asked, what is the reality on my trip to Mexico? And how much did I spend versus how much would I have spent? And so, what I've done is I've crunched all the numbers, I've looked at all the totals, I've looked at the costs of flying out there, the costs of, um, staying in a hotel for just one night now again remember i kind of got off a little bit cheap because of the fact that i it was just me number one that was just me um number two i also had um uh, stayed with my parents uh, and they hooked me up uh with a couple of meals uh, amazing meals a couple of great places in phoenix if you're ever in phoenix let me know I'm happy to help you out because wow it was amazing so um there was some savings there um, however, I did, because of those savings, I kind of kind of went all out. You know, I just kind of, uh, you know, if I'm at a ball game, or first off, I went to two different baseball games. Um, in addition to that, I had a couple of beers at each game, and those are running 15 bucks each. So pretty, pretty insane. Um, so I was probably spending a little bit more liberally than I normally would have. Um, same thing, you know, I, I did some gambling at the casino. Uh, not that I won anything or not that I even bet a lot, but I've figured that into the cost of this trip as well. And I'll tell you right now, I spent $100 on gambling. Um, just plunked down 100 bucks and said, give it a go. Wasn't for me. It was over way too quick. Not a lot of fun, but hey. Um, so, all right. So, uh, total. You ready? I'm going to do a little drum roll here, I guess. You 
know, and, and just go, hey, what was the reality for everything, um, including dental work, flight, food, uh, drinks, uh, ball games, and then also including glasses, the total was $2,648. Um, and to, as a point of reference, it was $3,200 to have my teeth done here locally. Um, and that includes the glasses. And so if I had included the glasses in the price of what it would have been, um, if I include the glasses into the price of uh, what it would have cost me here, um, my glasses um, costs here would have been approximately 400 to $485. So you add that on. And so that means that ultimately, we'll take the glasses out of it. Ultimately, the savings on this trip for me if I include the glasses, it was a thousand. If I don't include the glasses, it was eight hundred, and that's with me doing all that stuff. Again, probably would have been higher if there were more people going with me and stuff like that. But again, that's the whole idea of a of a dental vacation, right? Is the opportunity to go, and even if I had broken even, I would have had those experiences along the way. So, at this point, as of today, would I recommend it? Yes, yes, I would. I would recommend it as um, as something to look into at least um, and there are different places you know you can find different websites that have just de different dental places at different uh, you know outside different resorts in Mexico or you know Puerto Rico or San Juan or wherever you know um, wherever you want to go uh, there, are, there are opportunities for dental work and apparently optical work which I hadn't even considered so that's something to consider as well, right? If you're going to be doing a um, medical vacation like this, um, try and lump as much stuff as you can in, right? In hindsight, you know, there's some joking about how much is Botox, you know, how much is liposuction, um, <laughs> how much would be some new hair, you know, all those things. If I could, maybe I'd want to, you know, stack those in and get those all in. And that's going to make the trip even more economical. So there you go. That was my experience. Again, time will tell though. Time will tell how well the teeth hold up. Uh, time will tell as to whether or not the glasses are actually um, a really good fit. Um, let me also say this about the glasses. Um, so these are progressive lenses. Um, and so for those of you who are unaware, it's sort of like a bifocal kind of a thing, right? You've got, basically you've got just kind of slowly but surely the, um, the prescription goes between the different areas. And they say that it's a radical um, experience to kind of get used to. I haven't worn glasses in 30 years, so I'm still not used to them. I'm not 100% sure. I can't speak to the quality of the glasses, um, mostly because I've never had progressives before and I'm still getting used to them. Not only that, but then my dad put them on. He was looking around going, oh yeah, these are great progressives, you know, and he wears progressives as it is, so he could speak to us whether or not they were good. He thought that they were good. Fact is, is I'm actually concerned that my prescription um, on, the, on, the, on the U.S. side is actually what was screwed up. So prescription on the U.S. side is screwed up. And then I take it to the Mexican guy and he puts it together and it's not right. Or perhaps the prescription is not right. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the glasses checked out. I'm going to take them to an ophthalmologist. I need to go to an ophthalmologist here anyway. Um, get a little bit more done and looking at my eyes, making sure my prescription is right. And then making sure the glasses match the prescription. And last but not least, I also got the feeling that if for some reason the glasses weren't right, um, the the people there and the border, you know, they were saying, "Hey, listen, mail them back to us. All right, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll get it. We'll get it done. We want to get it right." So that was pretty cool. They seemed pretty accommodating along those lines. So there you go. That was a little bit about my medical vacation. Um, you know, luckily being a realtor, I had a little bit of freedom that allowed me and my schedule to make that happen. Um, that particular week didn't have a lot going on. Um, now this week, hey, guess what? I got uh, I got four four deals going on. So, so that week was a good week to go. Um, and yeah, so uh, that was my experience. If you ever have any questions or anything like that, feel free to give me a shout. I'm happy to talk about what my experience was. Uh, maybe add some more tips and tricks on what I learned versus you know this experience here. Maybe on the videos that I didn't share. And uh, um, anyway, hope you have a great day. God bless.